joy of the feast. Welcome back into my kitchen. Uh, this is where I show you how to do things really quick and easy. Um, some of my favorites and today we're doing um, a classic southern recipe, something that's great for a weeknight meal. We're doing a classic chicken pot pie. So this is super easy, something you can do for a great weeknight meal. Um, you can even freeze pot pies. They're freezable so you can make them in advance, put them in the freezer and then pull it out. Um, and have it ready for a weeknight meal. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to run through it. It's going to be super quick and easy. And let's get started. And so we're going to get started. We're going to jump right in. I got some water boiling away. I'm still waiting for me to put something in here. And so I'm going to add my chicken breast. I'm using boneless skinless chicken breast. Um, that's really the easiest thing. And you know what? I've, I had these thought out. But even if you have a frozen chicken breast, you can put frozen chicken breast right in your water. A little flavor in there. And we're going to let that boil. And now we're going to work on the rest of our pot pie ingredients. And let's get started. First part, let's see. You've seen my videos before, right? So you already know what the ingredients are going to be that go in butter. First thing going in, butter. We want to create a roux in the pan. And that's how we get a nice gravy. So a roux is simply, a, it's a way of thickening sauces. It's fat and flour. In this case, I'm using butter. And we want to flavor, get our seasoning ingredients in to flavor the roux. And so we use what's called a mirepoix, fancy French term that just means carrot, celery, and onions. It's really the base of flavor of all cooking, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to put onions in, right in the melting butter, and I'm going to put in carrots and celery, already chopped up. And I'm actually going to turn this to a medium-high heat. So I really want to get these, they don't have to be translucent right away. I mean, they don't have to be translucent. We don't have to wait for them to caramelize and get translucent because, um, you know, this is going to go in the oven and bake for 35 minutes. So we don't need to let them cook through on the stove. But I do want to get a nice sizzle. I want to get the temperature up because when I add the flour in, the heat is what activates that starch to thicken up and like spread its wings and make your thick sauce, right? So I'm going to put those are the seasoning ingredients, but I'm going to go ahead and put my potatoes in because I do need those to cook through a little bit. Um, just some diced red potatoes. I use red potatoes, red skin potatoes, because I don't have to peel them. And if you're lazy as I am sometimes in the kitchen, then use red potatoes so you don't have to peel potatoes ever. So you could do that for potato salad or anything. I love my red potatoes, even some mashed potatoes, and leave the skins right on there. See, my mom always said you can learn a lot from a lazy person. So here you go. All right, so I've got my potatoes in and all my seasoning vegetables. So now it's time to build the roux. So I'm gonna just grab my flour. Typically you want kind of a equal parts of the fat and your flour. But an easy way to do it so I don't have to really measure is when you build a roux, you really just kind of want that um, the butter flour mixture to look like wet sand. When it looks like wet sand, then you know you've got a like perfectly balanced roux. Now this is what my I learned in culinary school. That this is this is a roux, and this is how you make pan sauces. But in my house growing up, it was just pan gravy. Whatever drippings left from the meat were in the pan. My grandma reached over with her hand and just sprinkled some flour in there. And stir it up, add a little stock or water, whatever she had, some milk, and make a pan gravy. So I didn't know the fancy terms for it back then, but we've been doing this forever. So you want to let it cook a little bit because you don't want the raw flour taste. So you want to let it cook out just a little bit. And when you smell that flour, you kind of smell it. It smells like baking bread. Then you know that, um, then you know you've got your roux cooked out and you're ready for your liquid. So I'm going to add about two cups of chicken stock. Now at this point, I want it on high heat because I want this to come to a boil and thicken up. 
So I'm going to let that go. Stir it up a little bit. And you got to give the starch time to work. Give that flour time to work. Thicken it up. And I'm going to add some poultry seasoning, the rest of my vegetables. Just a frozen mixed vegetable for the pot pie. You want to do some broccoli and some other fresh vegetables, feel free to do it. I'm showing you kind of the classic way, which is some frozen mixed vegetables are going to go in. But I'm going to let this come together a little bit first, and then I'll get those in. So our sauce is super thick. It's perfect. I want to add my poultry seasoning in. Just a couple of shakes of that. Stir that in. I'm going to add my mixed vegetables. Again, it's about a cup of frozen mixed vegetables. Depending on what type of crust you use, I use a, a frozen store-bought crust. Um, if you are using a deep dish, this may be enough for one pot pie, but if you're using the sh more shallow uh, pie crust, then you can get two pot pies out of this. You can also make it in a long pan if you've either refrigerated or roll-out crust. You, know, you can mold the bottom crust the way you like it. I always like bottom crust. I never do a top crust pot pie because my favorite part of a pot pie is the crust and the juice, to be honest. Um, the vegetables are just an added bonus. <laughs> but I like crust and juice. So I want a bottom crust. I want a top crust. This is perfect. Just add a little pepper in there. And now I'm ready to go into my pie shell. Just a nice deep dish. Nine inch pie crust. I do um, let it thaw out a little bit. Just sitting on the counter while you're doing all this and it'll be ready to go. My vegetables and sauce are all ready to go. And so let's get the chicken out and get it chopped up. And into the party with everybody else. I'll just run my knife right through here. You can do shredded chicken too if you want to. You can take the chicken breast and shred it up um, either in your food processor or in your mixer with the paddle attachment, like in your, your stand mixer. And you can shred up cooked chicken breast to have more shredded texture. I like the chunks in my pot pie though. That's how I'm doing that. We're going to go right into the crust. Yum. Again, just a nine inch deep dish frozen pot crust. Yes. You want to make sure you don't fill it up too much so your sauce doesn't bubble out of there when it's baking. The vegetable's trying to escape on it. That's ready to go. We're going to work on the crust. Get this pot out of the way. Now, this is your refrigerated pot crust. They come two in a pack. So again, you can do, well, both of them come two in a pack. The frozen one in the pan comes two in a pack. So you can make two pot pies out of this. So I've got my pie crust out. And I just like to do little cool designs on it. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm just going to take a fork and kind of do a crosshatch just like that right on my pie crust. And it's just a little thing, but it makes it so pretty when you um, have a little extra design on top. Sometimes you can use a little, like a little small biscuit cutter. You can use a shot glass, whatever you have that's really small, and make little holes all over it. You can look up ideas on mine too but just do something to decorate your crust. Just do a nice little cross hatch. It's just back and forth alternating your fork. All the way down. Pick it up. Place it right over your pie. Like that. Easy breezy, right? And what I do is I just go around and I mark off, I mean, uh, kind of rub off the sides of that um, pie crust so that I take that excess away. And then I'll just go back and crimp the sides. Just 
taking my finger and my thumb, and just make a little crimp all the way around. This is another thing that makes it really pretty. Boom, and we're done. All right, so there is my pie. I'm gonna put it in the oven on 375. This will bake now, if you're gonna freeze it, you want to freeze it, you can freeze it right now. You can partially bake it and then freeze it. Um, you can partially bake it and put it in the fridge for later in the week. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to go ahead and bake this um, pot pie off because we're going to eat it. Three seventy-five, and that'll cook for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll see how it turns out. My pie's got about five to seven minutes left. I'm going to pull it out and do a quick egg wash on it. That's going to give us a really nice, um, just a nice shine. Like, a, like you see pastry and it's kind of shiny. That's what the egg wash does. So it's just an egg, maybe a little tiny bit of water in there. Just beat it up and take your, like a silicone basin brush or a basin brush. You just want to baste it. That's going to give you a nice shine on your crust. Beautiful. Kind of glossy. Going to have a glossy crust. So back in the oven for another five minutes. Okay, I am so excited. It's time for the pot pie to come out of it. It smells so good in here, guys. I can smell that crust. Oh my gosh. My favorite part. Look at that. That golden, mm, that is a piece of heaven right there. This reminds me of my grandmama right here. This is comfort food at its best. Chicken pot pie for the soul, you hear me? Whew. So I'm gonna get on in here. Look at that, I just wanna peel, when I was a kid, I would literally go around and like take all the crust off. But yeah, I would get basically in trouble for that. But hey, I'm just gonna dig on in here and get some in a bowl. This is one of my favorite things. You could do this pot pie with a veggie, just a veggie pot pie. You can do this exact same recipe, veggies. You could do a beef pot pie. Of course, you wanna use beef stock instead of chicken stock. Um, but really, the process is exactly the same. I even make a salmon and sweet potato pot pie. You can be creative with it. Think of what you want. It doesn't have to be the classic traditional things. Mm. Yes, yes. Y'all don't mind me if I just taste this real quick. I enjoy my own feast. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's my happy dance. That is so good. Get your family together one night this week and make this pot pie. Bring them around the table. Enjoy the feast together. You know, talk to each other. Spend some time with each other around this pot pie. The recipe is going to be down in the description please like this video, share it with your friends, and make sure you're subscribed so you know when all of my videos come out before anyone else. And that's it for today, classic chicken pot pie. Um, stay tuned for the next episode of Joy of the Feast, and Chef Lisa is out.